Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today is the day before Christmas and you find yourself without a whiskey for the whiskey drinker in your life. Well, I'm here to help. I'm not going to assume any sort of knowledge, there's no pretentiousness here, and in fact, I'm going to go really, really quick and break things up in a way that you can easily consume based off what you know about the individual. So, I've broken this up into different sections so you can quickly identify what they usually drink and what I'd suggest getting for them as a gift. I'll put some timestamps over here for you to quickly jump to the part of the video that you're looking for, and chapters in the description if you happen to be on your computer or phone. I also have reviews on most of these whiskeys, so if you want to learn more about them in depth, then go ahead and click on any of those descriptions. For example, if you recognize any of these bottles and can think to yourself, oh yeah, I've seen this one here on you know this person's shelf, that's the idea, is you can recognize the bottle. You don't have to know what it is. I'm gonna tell you what to upgrade it to that's gonna be a little bit more expensive, not a whole lot, but is gonna be along the same flavor profile of something we already know that they like. So that's the idea here. And where I'm gonna go first is some of the top selling whiskeys in the world, because there's a very good chance that's gonna cover the person that you're shopping for. I'm sure that you recognize this one. This is the Jack Daniels Old Number 7, and pretty much everybody knows this. this is the top-selling whiskey in the world. So uh, even the most curmudgeonly people who just want to drink whiskey in their Coke or whatever will still appreciate an upgrade up to Gentleman Jack. And at about $25, you're not going to go wrong. It's a little something special, and I bet they'll love it. Johnny Walker Red is a really common stopping place for whiskey drinkers, and the reason for it is because it's not all that great. People try it and then they just decide that they don't like whiskey. So, if your person that you're buying for loves Johnny Walker Red, just buy them a bigger Johnny Walker Red. They sell it in 1.75s. But if you want to try upgrading them, there's a couple of different places you can go. The obvious upgrade is Johnny Walker Black. Now this is a great one, it's one that personally got me into drinking a lot more types of whiskey, especially scotch, so it's a really good choice. If the person is a little bit more open, or maybe younger or so, they've probably heard of Monkey Shoulder and maybe never tried it. Monkey Shoulder is a quintessential kind of opener to blended scotches, and it's one that isn't terribly expensive. So, it's something that I would suggest moving them into. Next. Jim Beam White Label is another one that's very commonly mixed and can be improved upon for only a couple of extra dollars for the Jim Beam Black Extra Aged. And I guarantee you it's on the shelf in the place you're about to walk into. Jameson Triple Distilled. This is regular Jameson that you'd see at any bar. This is another really common one and people love to mix it because it's extremely smooth. Triple distilling removes a ton of character from a whiskey and just leaves you with a pretty smooth whiskey. Now, if you want to still stay smooth but kick it up a little bit, this is the Jameson Black Barrel. It's only a couple dollars extra. In some places it's the same price and it is worlds better. So, trust me on this one, they'll love it. Up next is Crown Royal. It comes in a little purple bag, you've probably seen it before. People tend to mix this one with ice and just kind of sip it on the rocks. So we're going to stick with a Canadian whiskey to replace this one with and move into something that I personally think tastes a lot better, and that's the Forty Creek Barrel Select. It's going to cost you about the same amount, maybe a little tiny bit more, but it is worlds better. And although it's not technically the same profile, Canadian whiskeys do tend to taste very similar, so I think that they'll really appreciate the improvement. Maker's Mark. This one you probably recognize from the red waxy seal that covers the top of it. Everybody thinks these are really cool. They are, frankly. And luckily, the improvement is very easy. So go from regular Maker's Mark over to Maker's Mark 46. It's a brilliant whiskey, and they're going to love it. Canadian Club is a favorite among whiskey drinkers who are a little bit more set in their ways, so you might be better off just getting a 1.75 liter of something that you know that they already like. But in this case, if you do think that they'd be interested in upping the ante a little bit, then go for the Canadian Club Reserve 9 Year. Now this is a whiskey that's going to taste a little bit different, might be like a special sipper for them, but I think they'll enjoy it. Now there's thousands of different whiskeys obviously, I could go on like this all day long, but I'm trying to give you a fast video. So. If you can describe the label of what you think that they know, just say, you know, it's a black label, it has some white text on it, or it's a white label, has some black text on it, and it looks kind of old timey, right? The person working at the store that you're about to walk into can probably help point you in the right direction, and don't be afraid to ask. We love sharing the knowledge of the whiskey that we all know and love. So let's talk about some bourbons and talk about how we can really actually up the game of stuff that they already have. I know that you're probably in a hurry, so I don't want you to have to hunt down some sort of rare bourbon that you're probably not even going to get your hands on. So instead what I'm going to do is give you three options for budget bourbons and then a few more kind of more expensive bourbons. 
and all of them are gonna be delicious. Even if they've been drinking for 40 years, they're gonna like everything on this list, I guarantee. So, I'm gonna put the price at my local total wine here, just so you can make an educated guess, and we'll go into it. So these three budget options are, Wild Turkey 101 is a great selection. It will always make this kind of list for me. It's undervalued, in my opinion, at $22 for 101 proof. Now, don't tell them that because they could totally get away with charging more for it. But because it's such a budget whiskey, it will always make this kind of list for myself. But if you want to up the game just a little bit more by about $10, you can go for the Wild Turkey Long Branch. This is Matthew McConaughey's whiskey that he did along with Wild Turkey. And it makes a kind of a cool story. Go ahead and check the review I did out on it if you want a little bit more information, if you do choose to present this one. It's one of those things you can kind of tell them as you give it to them. But let's go into the next one. Elijah Craig is a bourbon just like the 101 that does everything well. It mixes well, it drinks neat well, it drinks chilled well, and in general, the flavor profile is one of my favorites. If you really want to up your game though, most places will have an Elijah Craig small batch. You can tell by the little black label down there as opposed to the red. And if you see the black label, you're pretty much going to get a good quality product. Um, I really can't even think of any other batches that haven't been good in recent years that you'd still be able to find. So. Go ahead and buy one of these and you will be very well off. 1792 small batch is one that I've given as a gift myself as recently as four days ago. So this is one that I always tell people that they should go to. It's a great beginner bourbon. It tastes fantastic. I personally go enjoy this quite frequently. As you can see, it's mostly gone, but it's also something that isn't gonna break the bank, it's $28. And although it doesn't stand out on the shelf as like, hey, buy me, you know, a lot of people walk by this because of that reason. If you wanna up the game a little bit, go for the full proof. This is a little bit more expensive, but it got Whiskey of the Year a couple of years ago. So, I mean, it's something really, really good. Most places choose to do a single barrel version of this, so I can't speak to that, but if you happen to see the, the name of the company that you're in, you know, like a, of the liquor store, it's kind of up to you whether you wanna buy that or not. If they have the distillery only version, that's the one I'm recommending. And you could always ask the person in the store if it's a store pick. That's the key word that you want to use. So don't necessarily get the store pick, although most of them are pretty good. Four Roses Single Barrel. Now there's a bunch of different variations of this, but all of them are good. So you're in good hands. So you don't even have to necessarily look. But if you are at all interested uh, in learning kind of more about what the letters on those bottles look like, you can check out the video that I put down in the description and kind of learn a little bit more. But for your purposes, $50, get this bottle. It's delicious, tastes like, quintessential bourbon. The Angel's Envy is a $53 bourbon. It's port finished bourbon, which means that it's gonna taste like vanilla and berries and be very, very sweet, but in a great way. So this is one that I would be remiss not to put on this list. Everybody seems to like this bourbon. It seems very unanimous. And I think for $53, if that's in the price range that you're going for, this is a fun bottle to give people because not only does it look cool, but it's kind of uh, Christmassy. It's got angel wings on the back. So. Go for it. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, or JDSBBP, right? So this is something that, <laughs> if you see it on the shelf, this is worth picking up. This is $73. It's gonna kick somebody in the teeth, though. So be aware that what you're buying somebody is, a, in my case, this is 66.5% ABV. That's 133 point something uh, proof. So. This is going to be a heavy hitter and probably not for the faint of heart, probably not for a beginner. Honestly, even if it's just kind of fun to watch somebody just cringe at how heavy the alcohol is, they're not gonna enjoy it unless they are a frequent bourbon drinker. But if they are, they're gonna really enjoy it. And it really shows what Jack Daniels can do. Now, barrel bourbon is one that I didn't think I was gonna put on this list at first, but then I started thinking about it and I have never had a batch of barrel bourbon that wasn't absolutely delicious. Now, what they do is they find different bourbons, they mix them together or blend them, and then they put them out as different batches. So whatever batch you find, I can feel confident in saying that you're not gonna get a dud. This is something that's unique. Most likely they wouldn't have had it, and even if they have had it, they haven't had that batch because they come out pretty frequently. So this is a really good choice for a buy, and although the price varies a little bit, this one won't break the bank. So let's move on to scotches. If you're buying for a scotch drinker, you're pretty safe in sticking to a brand that they already know. The regions and the brands across all of Scotland really vary as far as the flavor profile of what they're putting out. Now, here's the one thing I want you to keep in mind. Buying a smoky whiskey is not something for the faint of heart and is usually something for somebody to take on of their own volition. So, 
I will point out when something is going to be a very smoky whiskey, because you don't necessarily want to point somebody who's used to drinking floral or pear or apple and just have them have a mouthful of cigar ash. Now that's something I enjoy, but not something that you want to be surprised by. So first things first, we're going to start off with Johnny Walker. Now I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Johnny Walker, of course, is huge. It's very, very popular. And a lot of people have tried the red, a lot of people have tried the black, but other than just hearing about the blue, a lot of people haven't actually tried the blue. Now I'll let you know a little secret. The blue is a fun thing to drink because of its reputation, but there's a lot better whiskeys out there. That being said, you still can't beat the blue for a kind of casual whiskey drinker to feel really special. So here's a suggestion. They sell these packs, and they are these miniatures, actually, it's where this small bottle of black came from, where they have the top end Johnny Walkers. They have the black, the gold, the platinum, and the blue. And it's about $99, and I think it is the perfect gift for this. It will give people the experience of having the blue, and likely the realization that, oh, this probably isn't worth $200. <laughs> so don't waste your $200, get them the full pack or get them something that they already like and just kind of up it. It goes red, black, double black, probably skip that one because it's smoky, green, gold, platinum, blue. So if you want to just up from wherever they are, they might enjoy it, although most of them have a different flavor profile. The Glen Murray is about $27 and it's one that I recommend to new scotch drinkers very frequently. It's something that if you want to up somebody's game, you go up to the 15 or the 18 year, and either one of those are going to be absolutely beautiful and you won't necessarily have to spend a ton of money. So I highly recommend it. I think both of those are a great option. Now the Belveni 12 Double Wood is one that a lot of scotch drinkers have tried. It's a little bit of a strange tin. You might not think to go purchase this one based off just the way it looks. It's not really, you know, screaming off the shelf, hey, buy me. It does look a little old timey. So. If they drink the Balvany 12, then go for the Balvany 14. It's finished in rum casks and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. I guarantee they're gonna call you and tell you how good it is. This is the Glen Morangy 10. And if you've ever seen this bottle at a bar or on their shelf, then you know it's pretty good. It's pretty solid, but at 10 years old, it has a lot of room to grow. Now, one of those ways it can grow is into this. This is called a tail of cake. Now this is a, I don't know if it's limited release per se, but it's new and it's about $95. So it's not cheap, but I will say this is one of my favorite whiskeys that I had this year. And I think it will do really, really well by the person that you're buying for if that's within your price range. If it's not at about half the, that price, there's two other options that you should go for. There's the Glen Morangy Quinta Rubin, and then there's a Glen Morangy Nectar Door which is D apostrophe O-R. And both of them will be considerably good upgrades to the regular 10. The Glenfiddich 12 is a, another really good one. This is one that a lot of people have had. It's fruity, it's complex, and it's fun to drink because you get to explore whiskey a little bit. But they have age statements. They've got the 15 and the 18. I would recommend skipping the 15 and go for the 18 if that's within your budget. But the IPA edition here is one that I would recommend you go for because it kind of goes a little sideways from the regular Glenfiddich taste and instead it's finished in IPA barrels and it does actually give quite a bit of character to it. So this is a, another unique choice that they probably haven't tried before. The Brook Lottie Classic Lottie is another really good example of something that people tend to walk by. You see this on the shelf, it looks awesome, but you never pick it up. But the Brook Lottie comes from an island that's very smoky However, this one here is not smoky. This is gonna taste like flowers and it's gonna taste like fruit and it's gonna taste clean and crisp. And I will say that I guess I'm a little partial to the color. <laughs> so I think this is another good one to pick up and opening this in a gift, that color is going to make their, their eyes pop a bit. The Anak 18 was a huge favorite of mine this year. It just knocked my socks off. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot left and I've been purposefully making it take forever. It's a little bit expensive, around $110 or so, but this one is just fantastic, especially if you happen to know that they like sherried whiskeys. This one does it and it does it really, really well. So this is a safe bet, even at that price. Now on to three different smoky whiskeys that if they don't like smoke, these are the ones to ignore. So this is the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. This just came out this year and I was blown away by how good it is for a five-year-old scotch. Whereas most Ardbegs kind of taste like uh, campfire smoke, this one tastes a little bit more like barbecue mesquite. And it's something that I've only ever tasted in a really smoky bourbon before, but in this case, loved it, loved it, loved it. So go for it, it's cheap too. 
On the topic of getting people into peated whiskeys, if you want to be that person, Talisker 10 or Talisker Storm are good places to start them. Just give them a warning that it's going to taste a little smoky. But either one is a good choice if you want to be that person that they'll remember forever. Lastly is Lagavulin 16. Now this is not one I can speak with personal experience because I actually have never tried it before. However, I can tell you that the whiskey community as a whole loves this whiskey. It is peated, it is smoky, but it's also extremely, extremely good. And I'll be reviewing it in a couple of months. I just felt like I couldn't leave it off this list because it's one that, as I said, the community itself loves. If the Irish whiskey drinker in your life loves Irish whiskey or just a more refined whiskey in general, something easier to drink, then Irish whiskey is a good choice. Now, they're not all Jameson, and they're certainly not all Proper 12. But if we're talking Jameson, we've got this, which I talked about a little bit earlier in the video, however you might have skipped it. So this is regular Jameson. It's fairly cheap. It's triple distilled, so it's very easy to drink. It's not going to have a whole lot of harshness to it, and it's not going to have a whole lot of character to it. So if you want to throw that character in there, go for the Jameson Black Barrel. Or if you want to throw a little bit age on there, the Jameson 18 is really good as well. Now next is Redbreast 12. They refer to themselves as the quintessential pot still Irish whiskey, and they're not wrong to do so. This is the Redbreast 12, which is really good. If they've never had this before, this is a great one to start with. But if they had, and you want to knock your, their socks off with one of my personal favorites, this is the cask strength version of the Redbreast 12. It is worlds different, and it is way better, and so good, so good. This is a great choice. There's currently three different spot whiskeys out there. There's the green spot, the yellow spot, and the red spot. Now, what you'll probably want to do is, if you've ever seen them drink the green spot, upgrade them to the yellow. If they've never had the green, start them at the green. It's about $67 or so, versus this, which is about 100 or so. Now, if they have, or if you really want to kind of fit it into the budget, this is the one to go to. This is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys, and they're going to love it, I hope. It tastes really buttery and just very mellow and delicious. The green spot, harsh is the wrong word, character is probably a better word, but it's not your definitive kind of Irish whiskey that's just smooth sailing the whole time. This has a little bit of character to it. They're going to enjoy drinking it and they'll enjoy picking out some of the nuance. This one's easy. Get anything from Teeling. Teeling, everything is good. Bushmills. Lots of people drink Bushmills white label and lots of people enjoy it. but. I think that they would be better off having the black label. It's significantly better, and it's at about $30 or so. So although it's twice the price of the white, it makes a good Christmas present. If you really want to up the game, though, you can go for the Bushmills 10, which is a little bit more expensive, or even the Bushmills 16, which is quite a bit more. If money truly is no object for you, then, you know, first off, become a patron. <laughs> but second off, you want to pick something that they're going to love, right? So let's talk scotch for a second. I'm not talking like a thousand dollars here. I'm talking like a few hundred dollars max. If you know what they drink, up the age range into your budget and you'll generally do okay. Now, scotch, in my opinion, hits its sweet spot between 18 and 21 years. Anything older than 21, you start getting a little bit different character than what the distillery tends to have because you're getting a lot of influence from the barrel. Anything under 18 years, and you're starting to kind of get whiskey that's still figuring itself out. You know, most of it's gonna taste pretty good, especially around the 10, uh, 12 and 15 years, but 18 is really when it gets into its own. 21 is when it gets really, really good, but a lot of times the price really is way higher for the 21s. So keep that in mind. If you wanna go for a Glen Livid 18 or a Glen Morangy 18 or an Oban 18, those are all great choices. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit different because there's unicorns across the spectrum here, and I could name a thousand different brands and just kind of tell you a million different things. But you're in here to get in, get out, and get something, right? So. Pick anything from one of these brands and you will do well, guarantee you. Let's talk Scotch. McKellen, Glenlivet, Glengoyne, Balvenie, Bunahaben, and Ardbeg if they like peated whiskeys. Um, also, if you really wanna go hardcore into peated whiskeys, try to find an Octomore. American whiskeys, this includes things like bourbons. You wanna go for barrel bourbon, I already kinda talked to you about how all of their batches so far to me have been very good. 
Joseph Magnus. These are gonna be kind of interesting. The bottle looks cool, it's a cool gift, and it's a little bit expensive, and it tastes really good. Buffalo Trace, you might have to ask somebody in the store which brands are Buffalo Trace brands, but I'm gonna list a whole bunch of them here for you, uh, kind of give you some pictures. Then Four Roses. Now Four Roses is gonna be on the lower side of a lot of this, but don't go for the actual lowest Four Roses. It's, it comes in like a yellow topped bottle. Go for either the small batch, the single barrel, or the four um, small batch select. Any of those will be really good. Next, Taiwanese. And I know what you're thinking, what? <laughs> Taiwanese, I didn't even know that they made whiskey, right? Cavalon. Just get anything from Cavalon. Don't question it, trust me. Next, Indians. So we've got Amrit and we've got Paul John. Everything from them is good, just really good. The one uh, thing to know is uh, there's a couple of peated ones. If you see the word peated, that's going to be smoky. Next is Japanese. Now Japanese is a total crapshoot. There's a lot of good Japanese and there's a lot of bad Japanese and there's a lot of rushed Japanese because suddenly they got really popular and they were just pushing things out the door. So go with Hibiki, but get something with an age statement on it. Don't necessarily go for, I forget what it's called exactly, I'll put it up here. But there's one of them that's a no age statement. It's less good. Um, go for something with an age if you can find it. Lastly is Irish whiskey. We're gonna talk about anything teeling is really good, anything red breast is really good, and the spot whiskeys, the green and the yellow, are really good as well. There's a few others for sure, but of this list, if you're just looking for a quick answer, I just gave you a whole bunch of them. Go in there, get something good, and I'm gonna be around today, you know? You're seeing this video on Thursday, the day before Christmas, I'm around. If you need help, send me a comment on the video. If you, you know, are just like, hey, this person really loves this, do you have a suggestion? I will do my best to respond fairly quickly. So, good luck. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And if this was helpful to you, consider subscribing. Maybe you could become a whiskey drinker as well. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.